Hi everyone, thanks for coming. We're here to give a presentation on AI9 digital twins and the dynamic environments for OREM. My name is Peijin Li and today, Jonathan and I will finish this presentation together. This work is led by University of Bristol and BT. We want to share some of our opinions and considerations on how to combine OREM with RL in this presentation. As a content show, we will introduce OREM first, then on the opportunities and challenges of machine learning more generally within ORAN. As a research group, we are particularly interested in the potential of RL solutions due to their proven capacity for sequential decision making in complex environments. We will then introduce a CICD pipeline for, to facilitate the development of RL solutions for ORAN, where we intend to use a digital tuning as an environment for algorithm training. We will then present an issue which can be encountered when training within simulated environments and deploying within, within the real world. That is the same to real gap, and we will put forward our thoughts on dealing with this issue. So, first of all, I'm going to introduce some background of ORAN. RAN means the radio access network, which is a part of the creative infrastructure of modern mobile communication networks. RAN bridges the UEs and the current networks. RAN interacts with UEs directly and route UEs data to the current network. So the service quality of RAN directly affects the UEs experience. The RAN architecture went through a profound change in the last two decades, from DRAN, CRAN, VRAN to ORAN. Although each RAN architecture has its own features, the overall trend is that RAN is decoupling the RF and the baseband unit and virtualizing its functionality to reduce the operation cost of the system. ORAN is a new emerging structure or organization. The ORAN Alliance was established in 2018. Its technology specification or details are still under planning, but already shows a strong appeal. That is because ORAN has two important properties, openness and intelligence. Openness is that it adapts the standard and well-defined hardware interfaces and software services. So the equipment or IPs involved in ORAN do not need to rely on specific vendors. More importantly, it is the first time that the RAN structure embraces artificial intelligence from its basic standard formulation. So ORAN will be built on the foundations of virtualized network and uh, network elements, white box hardware, and standardized interfaces that represent core principles of intelligence and uh, openness. We can say that there are two radio intelli intelligence controllers designed in ORAN, non-real-time rig and near-time rig. We show one feasible hierarchical structure of ORAN in this figure, and you can say that the non real time rig is used to provide services that are not sensitive to time requirements, while real time rig can provide more swift services like network, network organi organizing, resource control, etc. Each component is connected by standard interfaces like O1, A1, E2, machine learning model or deep learning model can be deployed into RICs through the format of microservice applications like X app and R apps. From the view of research, machine learning shows a powerful ability to solve com complicated optimization problems, which hopefully realize significant performance improvements in ORAN. Through so using appropriate machine learning algorithm, increases in power, thermal, and spectrum efficiency for example, can be achieved. An example application includes using RL for computational resource allocation between RUs and DUs, which has potential to significantly reduce power for consumption. If you have interest, if you if you are interested in this, uh, this is covered in more detail in our AI one research. Another example is that from the transmitter to the receiver, the signal undergoes a series of processing units such as modulation, coding, demodulation, deloising, and the corresponding channel measurement. Each unit has a well-defined mathematic model that can approach the shunnel limit, and it can be considered that a single unit has achieved its local optimal. However, 
There are significant challenges in the, ana in the analysis and optimization of cross units. If, we, if the whole of the above units is regarded as the optimization object, then this kind of global or multiple objective optimization is currently difficult to achieve. The combination with machine learning, RL, various learning paradigms makes all RAN have the potential for this overall or multi-objective optimization, which has been reviewed in some of the advanced researches. A very good example is that in the physical layer, the end-to-end -end machine learning from the transmitter to the receiver has been realized in an autoencoder way, which shows the advantages in synchronization, equalization, and uh, dealing with hardware impairments such as non-linearity. However, those research requires a large amount of data to train feasible models, which aren't always available. It also is hard to tune and validate model performance in the real world because an immature model poses a risk to the operation of the system. Further specific to the development and the deployment of machine learning models, there are more new problems to be solved. And in this page, we listed a couple of potential issues in machine learning model developing and develop, development stages respectively. The, these lists are not comprehensive, but are very representative. We need to notice that in the developing stage, the issues mainly related to the model design, algorithm developing, and the data acquisition. While in the deployment stage, the model's performance, fairness, robustness, etc., need to be validated carefully and how the model works under a risk environment. We believe that the explicit CICD, that is continuous integration and the continuous de deployment, plus the digital twin design is critical for solving above issues. RL, reinforcement learning, is a form of machine learning, which is also the focus of our research. Compared with other machine learning paradi paradigms like supervised learning and unsupervised learning, RL, propose, RL, proposes, RL proposes unique challenges because our agent needs to in interact with the virtual environment to find the optimum policy. The action and state-space state design, as well as the environment design, are critical, and that directly determines the performance of the models. However, the particularity of RL is not reflected in existing ML ops or DevOps. Therefore, on this page, we attempt to formalize the CICD pipeline of RL in ORAM. As you can see in the left figure, from the top of the pipeline design, we summarize the whole CICD process that includes three basic blocks. That is design, development, and operations. Each block is responsible for different tasks, like group algorithm and applications in design, model and testing in development, deployment and monitoring in the operations. So the interactions of these three blocks and in conjunction with the data engineering, an automated and reproducible RR model CICD pipeline is expected to be achieved, and meanwhile, ensuring its safety and security. Then, we further break down each block block into the high-level taxonomy of considerations and the methodologies shown in the right figure, just for you as a reference. From the design of the RL model, the MDP, Markov decision process formulation, matrix design like agent, state, action, and even reward, algorithm design, training methodologies like online or offline training, directly determine the success or failure of the models. While for the model de development, we focus on the design of the digital twins, the hyperparameter op optimization, and the scheme for performance evaluation. In this stage, the related training skills of the model heavily affect the model performance. For the operation, the AB deployment, backup scheme for model decay, and the interoperability should be considered. The deployment location is also important. Like in an ORAN system, where you want to deploy the model, models located on the H, CU, or DU will make a difference on communication latency and service quality. Moreover, the safety and the security concern of our model is important. 
To alleviate the concerns of safety and security, in the algorithm developing stage, we can abstract the IR model as a constrained MDP to reduce safety risks. The factors that may affect the model performance are constraints of the RL model. We should also consider the Davis QOps and the explainability of the RL model to fending off potential adversary attacks against RL models. For example, we can ex explore the downbound of the RL model performance by tuning high parameters of our reward design, like in the reward design for the long-term reward, short-term reward, and uh, reward triggered, triggered by specific events, there are trade-offs to be made. Also, we can mimic different adversary attack patterns or behaviors in a digital team to validate the robustness of the RL model. We have to say that each item mentioned in this figure is a considerable academic research problem. Most problems are not settled. We must study these answers under the background of the specific practical tasks. Therefore, we would say that the careful considerations of these concepts should streamline the time to deployment and mitigate business risks. All right, my part is done. I want to hand over the remaining part to John. John, over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Peizhen. So hi, I'm Jonathan, and I'm going to be talking at a high level about the functionality of the digital twin, what it provides, and a particular risk that we may, be, uh, we may want to be aware of. A digital twin is a simulator of sorts that is aligned with a physical system. In our case, it will replicate the elements and functionality of the live ORAN communications network. Through being a virtual replica, it affords functionality which would not be possible in the real world. For example, the training of RL agents. In general, RL develops near optimal control policies through interaction, which typically requires high levels of trial and error. Trial and error is inherently risky, and to allow random control actions to be taken within the real world may lead to significant reductions in quality of service for users or complete failure of the network, both of which are obviously undesirable and are things that we'd want to avoid. Through using a digital twin, we enable safe exploration for our reinforcement learning agents so that they can learn competent control policies without the risks associated with, the, um, with acting in the real world. We also can easily parallelize this environment, allowing for a reduction in wall clock training time for our agents. As such, we consider digital twins to be an essential part of the training pipeline. In addition to the benefits they provide within training, they also provide benefits from a governance perspective. They enable us to validate our models in situations that we are interested in and to quantify risks, which may be important in deciding on whether or not we would um, like to deploy a model where this process could be automated if we'd like it to, in order to improve the speed to deployment. One challenge and difficulty that I thought would be particularly compelling to speak about is the concept of the sim to real gap, where this uh, problem or concept is related to the difference in the behaviours of our simulated environment, in our case, a digital twin and the real world. So. Let us consider if we are presented with some task T, which behavior is controlled by some parameter, which is unknown. We incorrectly assume that this parameter should be X, but it is in fact Y. In the, in the figure uh, on the left, an example of this is shown. Just to talk you through this, in the first training period, we are training under parameter distribution D1 and we achieve convergence and a policy that performs well. In the second training period, the distribution changes. This represents our model being moved to deployment as we think it's competent and it's ready for this transition. As we see, the reward drops significantly when this change occurs. In this case, the model retrains and reconverges, but this pre-process of retraining is one which we said we'd like to avoid. We'd like to avoid this necessity to retrain on the real world. So what I'm going to suggest that we want to do is we want to try and improve the correlation between our digital twin and the real world, such that the results that we obtain within uh, si uh, simulated training 
are transferable to the real world. So a digital twin is likely to be a modular system comprising of multiple components where their associated models could be potentially improved through the introduction of machine learning models to approximate observed real world data patterns. So this would improve the correlation between our digital twin and our real environment. But this risk associated with this uh, with sim to real uh, may still exist, and it may also be difficult to quantify uh, this gap. For example, black box uh, training methods like uh, neural networks and things like that um, are generally not particularly amenable to analysis. So some of these issues may be difficult to observe, and this may be problematic from a risk perspective. So one paper and idea that we may want to consider is one by Cadian et al, where they describe a method to evaluate this by ensuring that models that are trained on the deployment environment obtain consistent in uh, performance or to consistent in performance on as in the real world. So what they do is they have a family, a number of methods, and they evaluate the consistency of the performance across those methods. If they are all consistent in both sets of environments, the environment can say, we can say that the environment is well correlated. So uh, we are still in the process of exploring these general ideas and look forward to speaking to you about these in the future. Thanks for listening. And we would welcome any questions to be emailed to uh, us at any of these email addresses. Thank you.